We've had a question about some guys might struggle getting the ball away from a scrum. As a nine, if you've got a dominant scrum going forward or being set, this is when it's a dominant scrum, when your scrum is set or going forward. From here to there, okay? Hi, welcome to Dallas Sports. Today we're making a video about passing the ball from a scrum. We've had a question about some guys might struggle getting the ball away from a scrum. We're just going to touch on one or two things that should help uh, improve when and how to make the pass more effective at a scrum. First of all, okay, Caleb's acting as my number eight, as you can see. Um, the ball's already at his back foot. And as you know, from a scrum, we put the ball in on the left side and then we walk around. Now, if my target is where the pole is, okay, or slightly deeper, the idea is I do not want to make a pass, right, when I don't have any room to work with. It's like this. Bear in mind, we'll have a number, number seven or number six on this side. Okay, it depends. So there's not a lot of room. As a nine, if you've got a dominant scrum going forward or being set, that's when you can actually guide the ball and open up. So you kind of like, if the scrum is nice and set, what you want to be looking for is to make room for yourself. So you can serve, move, and create a little bit more space, but don't touch the ball. The ball is still in the scrum. So once you've got enough room here, get your inside foot over the ball, okay, and then you can look at your target right before you pass. This is when it's a dominant scrum, when your scrum is set or going forward. From here to there. So if it's passing towards the right side as a scrum off, what I would say, step over the ball, but don't touch it. Move the ball with your foot, step over the ball, make sure you've got enough room to work with, and then pass, okay? Sometimes we are too eager because we've been told we need to play quick. But then we rush ourselves at the scrum and this is what happens. Someone's foot's in the way and we knock the ball on because we rush ourselves. At scrum time, I would say slow yourself down. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Slow yourself down, relax. You're going to play fast once the ball is in motion, once the ball is on the go. That's when we play fast. Question, what happens if you don't have a dominant scrum? What happens if your scrum goes backwards? The secret is do not go and try and get the ball. Okay, if I was you as a nine, my scrum is struggling, I'm not gonna go and dig for that ball. I'm gonna keep a distance of a meter and a half. If this is the number eight, okay. This is the number eight. My scrum is going backwards, look where the ball is. It's already under, on the, underneath, inside the scrum. So as a nine, for me to go and want to dig for the ball, that's a bit dangerous. That's when people step on your fingers, they step on your arms, you might injure yourself, okay? The most important thing then is to communicate with your number, number eight. Tell him where you are, okay? And tell him to flick the ball. He should be the one controlling the ball, not you as a nine. I'll say that again. So if, if I'm a number eight now, and my scrum is going backwards, let the number eight flick the ball. Okay, so if I was the nine there, I'll tell him I'm right behind you. So we can flick the ball, and then from there you can work with what you've got. Okay, so I can go into that a little bit more. If I know I'm gonna pass to the right side, and I'm right behind the number eight. I'm not gonna be square on because when I <coughs> excuse me, when I get the ball, I don't wanna catch the ball and take a few steps to pass. I'm gonna already be behind him, but I'm gonna be in my passing position. So once I get the ball, it's just one movement from there to the target. Okay, so that's another point. The next one: what happens if you're passing to the left? As we all know, number nines are very cheeky, right? They always want to get each other under pressure. 
So if the ball is put in this side of the scrum and you walk around and you're about to pass that way, normally the nine is here, the opposition nine is right there on top of you. And that's already pressure. Another key thing is you can ask the first receiver, okay, not to receive the ball too flat. Because if you expect a flat pass, this guy will apply pressure on your pass there. So if it's a flat pass, it's easy for them to put you under pressure. But if the pass is slightly deeper, okay, you've got more room then. You've got more room if the ball is going backwards. So that's another thing, okay? I hope that makes sense. Instead of passing flat, pass deeper. That's away from the opposition. The other thing is, let's go and have a look at this side, right? So now, I'm the number eight. Okay, number eight. Ball's at, at the number eight's feet. I'm passing that way, okay? I'm the number eight. Do I want to pass the ball? If the ball is on this side, close to the nine. No, you talk to the number eight, you tell him channel the ball. Channel the ball away from the opposition nine. Channel the ball for him, channel. Channel the ball, okay? So now, look where the ball is. The opposition number nine is here. The ball is quite a distance away. So now I can have my number eight blocking the number nine Okay, get my foot there close to the ball and then from there I can just pass because I've got room to work with. Also, it's important to talk to the number eights to stay binded, okay? So not, not holding on to the scrum with the hands. One shoulder needs to be, okay, making contact. Otherwise the ball is out. So there's a lot of things that you need to be mastering, especially in training. So when it comes to scrum time on the match day, pressure's up, everything is going through the roof. You've got to get it right by slowing it down. So I would say for any nine out there, get your number eight, spend five, 10 minutes at training and just go through this, okay? Routines where you put the ball in, you tap as you come around, he picks the ball up, pops it to you and you have a go. Small things like that. Also, okay, if the number eight's the ball's there and he needs to flick it, practice flicking the ball to you. What about if the scrum wheels? What about if the scrum wheels? The scrum wheels guys, okay, so let's say we're playing that way and now the scrum is wheeling to the left, so now the number nine is right on top of us. Okay, tell the number eight to open up even more. Now, if the opposition nine is here, look how far he is. The mistake I used to make was, I'll get into the scrum to make the pass. And then I'll get caught and the scrum will collapse on top of me. So, now I'm telling you, try this out. Okay, wheel the scrum. Wheel the scrum, open up as an, as an eight, open up. As soon as he opens up, so if it opens up, get in there, bang, and then off you go. As soon as he opens up that leg, that's when you've got to go. Because if you don't get it right, and there's daylight on the ball, the ref might shout balls out. Okay, so, I mean, this video was all about talking and explaining. Okay, not so much showing by doing a few passes. I've just had a question about what can we do to improve passing from a scrum. Like I said, there's a lot more to it, okay? Um, but I thought I'll touch on key points. Slow yourself down once the ball is in the scrum. Acknowledge what the scrum is doing. Okay? If the scrum is going forwards and your number eight is controlling the ball, stay behind the scrum. So what does that mean? Check this out. Let's say this is the number eight. Okay? If the scrum turns, as a nine, I'll be going this way as well, right behind the number eight. If the scrum is turning this way, I will also be going with the number eight, with the wheel of the scrum, all right? I see a lot of guys that even at international level, they break and they break against the scrum, the wheel of the scrum. 
which is so easy to defend. But if you go with the wheel of the scrum, it's so much easier because all the defenders, especially at the blind side, they can't see anything. So if your number eight wants to pick and go, you've already making yards. Or if you as a nine want to snipe, because you're going with the wheel of the scrum, you can go forward, all right? Um, so hopefully, like I said, we slow yourself down, acknowledge what the scrum is doing. Are we going forward or are we going backwards? The minute we see we're struggling here, you've got to always communicate with your number eight. Tell him, your ball, your ball, or whatever communication you want to use, tell him, flick the ball, all right? I'm right behind you, so it's a nice pop. Once the ball's popped, you can go from there. We'll do one or two demonstrations. Check this out. This is a good way of practicing someone flicking the ball to you and then you just acknowledge what the ball is doing because the ball, every ball is different. It's not always going to be like that when you're under pressure. That's why I'm saying slow yourself down. Get used to it. Okay, so watch. Watch the distance. Nice and easy. Yes, Caleb. He reacts to it. Okay. If you don't communicate, just go whenever you're ready. No communication, this is what will happen. Just go whenever you're ready. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Watch what happens. Check this out. Okay? Yes, Caleb, right behind you. Boom. Right? Let's hit the target. Let's see if I can hit the target. Okay? So what? Wait. I'm facing the way where I'm going to pass. And when I say go, or yes, Caleb, then I'm going to react and see if I can hit the target from here. Watch my distance, I'm not too close, and I'm not too far. Just a meter or so. Yes, Caleb. Okay, one movement. Okay, check that out. Practice it, let me know how you get on. And any more questions like that, please, uh, you know, get in touch. Or any more ideas, let me know. Like I said, there's a lot more to it, but I don't want to overload with this information. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.